So we're going to start for the uh, second video on my journey into learning how to TIG weld. And what do you think of my hat? So despite uh, ordering the, um, the TIG welder and the uh, like the welding helmet from the same supplier at the same time, the, the helmet arrived on its own. So I've got that all set up. Feel a bit like Darth Vader behind this. Quite chuffed with that one. It came really quick as well, so I, I, I just saw in the other videos, ordered from Germany, and I think it was with me within about three days, so really chuffed with that. So a few days later, the uh, welder itself still hasn't shown up, but uh, a letter from Parcel Force has. A love letter from Parcel Force. And it says on it, import. So although I bought on eBay, and I know I bought from Germany, I understood that uh, the price on um, eBay now includes all the duties and things. Uh, but obviously it doesn't. So I've had an unexpected bill for £113. Um, obviously I'm pissed off about that. Uh, it doesn't really help at all that that's also caused a five day delay to delivery. But the main thing I'm pissed off is about the cost. Um, I have contacted the supplier who is sort of, sort of being reasonable I suppose. Because it's not their fault that... Uh, so many of my fellow countrymen were so fucking stupid to vote for this Brexit, which is what's caused this, because obviously there was none of this before. Well, and obviously it wouldn't have been the delay either. Um, but what they've offered is to to send me about 100 quid's worth of um, TIG welding bits and bobs. So um, I've asked them to send some filler rods and some uh, spare tungsten tips and all this sort of stuff, which are, um, they're all what they call consumables. I don't know how consumable, because obviously having never done it, I don't know how quickly, but let's just see. So today, Posty has brought me this. So after paying my 113 odd quid, they came and delivered this the next day. Just wondering, out of interest, um, did anyone see any mention of having to pay all this kind of stuff on the side of that bus that was uh, driving around spouting bullshit and lies to people uh, six years ago? I must have missed that. Anyway, let's get this box open and stop whinging. I can't do anything about it now. It's an unusual position for me. I've actually gone out to do some shopping. Um, I generally, my shopping consists of sitting behind the PC and clicking some buttons and then waiting for the uh, courier person to come along. But for this gas and the uh, regulator thing I need, I've come out shopping. Um, recommend local uh, welding supply stuff. My mate uh, Brian who runs the Oak Swamp channel has uh, said these are the guys to come and see. So here I am. A nice shiny gas regulator, a 20 litre bottle of argon, and a totally good recommend. Um, they were really, really helpful in there. Uh, as most of you probably know, when you go to some of these kind of parts suppliers and things, uh, they can uh, a little bit on the condescending side. Um, the guys in here, they couldn't have been more helpful. They're really, really good. Right, hang off. Get this ready. The gas rag. So, one nice shiny gas rag that I bought yesterday. find it needs it and I didn't put it on there. I've just bolted a little bracket into the wall with a bungee around the gas bottle. Um, 
the guy at the uh, gas place said these things are most often damaged when people pull the gas bottle over. Um, of course, with all this hanging out the top, um, that's all going to get broken. So I thought that would be a good idea. And we've got this one, just the connection for the gas line to the welder itself. So you get that one on there. It's so basically the, the regulator. I don't know. It seems that this. So in this bottle, uh, the argon. I think he said was it. 2000 psi i mean that's a hell of a pressure you ain't going to want that coming out the end of your 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 tig torch and you <laughs> probably blow everything away so the little regulator knocks the pressure right down so we've got a gas pressure we can use so one of the other things the guy at the uh, gas place advised was to as soon as it's all connected up it's obviously pressurize it and just check for leaks so i got me a bottle of uh, Soapy liquid. So should there be any leak, we should see. So that's coming out. I can't see any. No signs of any there. And I guess we adjust this. get some pressure coming out Can't see any bubbles or anything there can't see anything there so I think I think we're looking good once that van's gone past I use me uh, Mark one ear just to have a really close listen just to make sure I can't hear any hissing. So this I'm just about to connect up the earth clamp cable. It just occurred to me that it sort of reminded me just how much power I'm messing around with when you need a cable that thick. Um, you know that's serious bloody stuff isn't it? So in the front of the um, TIG rotor here it's got a few connections have to be made depending on what you're doing but if you're ticking or arcing I ain't going to be doing arcing this you need this earth clamping and on the clamp itself let's just see if you can see it's got like a little um knobble thing on there and then in the hole it goes in at the top so it kind of it just goes in like a bayonet thing so it's just in and turn and it's in nice and firm that's a pretty good job so that's a really quick, easy thing to do. And on the front of this thing, I've got lots of knobs to play around with and learn about. A, um, I had a little read of the manual last night, which will give me give me a rough idea of what I'm up to. Um, but I need to connect everything else up yet, so let's not get ahead of myself. So the kits come with a few spares. There's these things that are all numbered that seem to control the amount of gas uh, argon that's around the weld. Um, and it's come with one pig, uh, one tungsten which needs to be sharpened, and then the bits and bobs that go in there. So I'm just going to put this together indoors. Uh, this thing here kind of clamps the, the tungsten in position. Uh, I can't bother doing that now because I've got to sharpen that up first. So I'm going to put that in. <laughs> yeah, let's put the back bit on first. So this back bit, which I assume we've got a little O-ring, so I guess that stops the gas coming out the wrong end. on there um, so that kind of clamps the uh, the rod in there um, so the, the, the kit have sent me three different sizes so I kind of I've had a look at a load of videos 
and it seems to a lot be down a preference obviously if you're doing very big thick stuff you're going to need bigger so I'm going to stick the middle size one on for starters I've got a five a six and a seven so I'm going to stick the seven on and it just screws on and that's it um, and once I've sharpened this tungsten thing and we seem to have to do it one end because these are colour labelled it's not very so clear on this one so this is a grey one this thing came with the welder and I thought well, that's good look it's like a little thing for um for the, you know maybe there's funny sizes on there and I looked at it I realised this is just like a a freebie gimmick look smart phone slot hex wrenches can opener. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Am I supposed to use that as a key ring? So as everyone knows, I've got one of their welders. Get the coffee on. Get a nice cup of coffee to take out to the garage. And then I think I can get the rest of the TIG welding stuff connected. I don't know. Maybe even fire up my first weld. Well, it won't be weld. First mess. So just doing a little bit more prep in the uh, garage. I'm lucky enough that I've got a like a metal workbench thing in the garage. That, uh, it came out the back of a van I bought years and years ago. It's the only bloody decent thing about the van. Anyway, um, I think maybe it's probably so that. I don't know if you can just see that area there is about 50 centimeters, and I've just swept that much swarf off of there. So. <laughs> I guess maybe uh, I should maybe clear up a bit more often. And it's just a little view of my garage, and this is for Brian over on the Oak Swamp thing, because he was moaning my garage is a mess. Now, when he came round yesterday, like, it's still a mess, but at least I can get from the entrance now all the way to the workbench. I hope you're happy now, Brian. Back here over to the reg. I've just been watching some of the, uh, the sort of how to TIG weld stuff. Um, it's one of the things, funny enough, the book doesn't tell me is what the gas pressure should be. Uh, the video I watched, which was ever so good, but unfortunately American, told me I need 15 cubic feet per hour. Yeah, and my gauge is cuffed hour. I don't know what the cuffed hour is. Um, or litres per minute. So I guess I better get on Google and find a uh, a page that will translate. Quick Google has told me 15 cubic feet an hour is about seven liters per minute. Um, so as I got a memory like a sieve, I thought what I'll do is I'll just mark on here. Uh, it's not the best pen, so I'll just mark on there, kind of where it needs to be. So I think the last bit of connecting, obviously, besides plugging it into the mains, is the porch uh, that um, just put together in, in the doors. So we've got two connections for this. Uh, that I assume is where the gas will run along. So, ah, again, a nice little rubber cover. It's so well made. Persuade it off with a screwdriver. So like a lot of these gas fittings, it's like just one of these like screw on things. Most of these are kind of finger tight and then just just need pinching up and then a little two pin connector which keyed which would be of a switch. Right, and that's that one. Right, and looking at my controls on here, I think so these are my amps. So um, I'm going to be doing TIG, or WIG as it's known in Germany, I still, I still, 
God. I wish I could stop seeing an image of Donald Trump in my brain with that stupid wig on his head every single time I see that word wig on here. I know it's pathetic and it's childish, but there we are. Um, I had a good read of the book on this switch here. We got a 4T and a 2T. I wasn't 100% clear what they meant, but it seemed to me 4T was probably the way to go to try. Um, watching some of the videos on Finnish stainless, they're talking about um, about 40, 50 amps. So we've got a scale here from 10 to 200. So I'll take a guess, that's in the middle somewhere. This is for the gas, so we'll let the gas flow for a bit before and after. AC balance isn't involved with this. Post gas thing is how long the gas runs after you've switched the arc off. Um, when you've got a pool of molten metal, if the gas went straight off, then oxygen would be able to get on there and you'd, it would be all uh, get all oxidised and horrible. So it just lets the gas flow for a little bit longer after. Then I think what we're going to have to do then is because gas is not going to come out of this until it's all switched on. So I need to do is switch this on and keep it away from anywhere so I can't get an arc. And then with it on, I need to adjust the gas flow rate because um, obviously that setting we looked at a minute ago was with no gas flowing, so it will change. There was a slight feeling of trepidation when plugging something new in. Let's plug it in. Ooh, well, it's not gone bang. We have a whirring noise. I see, so I think that, so that's our amps. Look. It tells us exactly how many we're on. Okay, so if I press the button, will we hear a hiss of gas? We certainly can. And as the gas is currently off, that's now purged the system. We're ready to set this gas up. So we we'll turn the gas on. One of the tips, I've watched loads and loads of YouTube videos. One of the tips they said was to put the gas tap all the way on, not just to turn, because sometimes it can leak. And then. If we turn this, we should start seeing pressure on there. It means we've got gas in the system. And when I press adjusting that, that looks like we're about right. See anything electrical you need not to have paint there, so bang that on there. That won't go on as far as I hope, but let's see. It's all going to be experiments. So I might be getting rather over ambitious here, but one of the bits of metal I've got is um, this exhaust tube, but of a size that I don't really need, and I certainly don't need this much. So I'm going to chop a lump of this off. It's got, uh, I think they're called swages, you know, the bits that go over the ends on both ends. So I don't want to bugger those up because those bits are handy. So I'm going to chop that a bit and this will be my first test piece yeah so as soon as i don't bugger up these bits i want we'll uh, chop a bit off of here Good old. <laughs> Okay, so unless I'm mistaken, I think I'm ready to rock and roll. I've got everything connected. I've got a very ambitious, it's really not like gas welding, the thinner you do, the harder it is, but you know, very ambitious bit of test stuff to do. Um, yeah, I think I'm ready to rock and roll. So if you want to see that, so that's kind of the end of this video. This is the setup video. So to keep you in suspense, and if you want to see me making a complete, uh, perfect welding first time, 
or a complete and utter arse of myself with a TIG welder, uh, you'll have to tune in next time.